You're listening to the Less Stress Lawyer Podcast, episode 84. Today, we're talking all about perfect focus versus imperfect focus. You ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Less Stressed Lawyer, the only podcast that teaches you how to manage your mind so you can live a life with less stress and far more fulfillment. If you're a lawyer who's over the overwhelm and tired of trying to hustle your way to happiness, you're in the right place. Now, here's your host, lawyer turned life coach, Olivia Vizacaro. Hey, y'all. How are you? Happy early Thanksgiving. What a fun time of year. I love the fall. I really love fall in the South because it's about 30 degrees warmer than I'm used to it being where I'm originally from up in Detroit. And there's so much that I'm grateful for this year. I'm grateful for you listening to this podcast. I hope you're getting a ton of value out of it. At the end of this episode, I'm going to announce the winners of the giveaway that I've been doing. I ran this last month. I've had all of these amazing reviews come in, and I'm going to announce five winners. I'm going to give away five different prizes, and I'm going to announce it here. I'm also going to announce it on my social media because I've posted about it there as well. And some people have submitted reviews, but there's not identifying information. So it's just your handle on the iTunes app. So, or not the iTunes app, the Apple Podcasts app. And I'm going to use your handle, but you're going to have to reach out to me because I don't have a way to send it to you. Okay. Next time I do this, I'm going to build in a mechanism so people can email me proof that they reviewed and then I have their contact information, which will make it much easier. But we're going to make do this time. All right. So if you listen to the podcast, I'm so grateful for you. Thank you for taking time out of your life to listen to the things that I have to say. My goal is always that I provide you with value and tips and tools and tricks and tactics that you can implement on your own in order to start seeing really immediate improvement in your day-to-day life. I hope you're getting that from this podcast. If you are and you haven't left me a rating and review yet, or you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that right now. And it would mean the world to me. Other things I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for getting to spend Thanksgiving with my parents. I was just back up in Detroit. I am going to sound ridiculous, but I go back up there to have my hair done. I've been going to the same stylist for a million years, basically. He's a really good friend of mine, and I just trust him completely. So I'm willing to fly back and forth in order to have him be the one to do my hair. But I was just back in Detroit in order to have that done. And my parents decided instead of having me come back again to Detroit, they were going to come down to Charleston. So they're on their way down here as we speak. And I'm so excited to get to spend the holiday with them in a way that looks a little bit different than what we're used to. And it's a departure from how we usually celebrate. But I'm going to be honest with you, nothing this year went the way I expected it to. And we're kind of just pulling an audible or calling an audible on a lot of different things that I didn't expect to go quite the way that they went. And the holidays this year look different for me than what I expected them to look like. If you're a client of mine or you're a friend of mine, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I'll get into that on another episode of the podcast. That's a total digression. All right. With that being said, though, I'm super excited. My parents are coming down. They rented a place right on the beach, and they're going to get to enjoy some time away from their day-to-day life. My dad just sold his business, so this is like their first retirement trip, which is so exciting. And he and I are going to go deep sea fishing. That's one of the things that we love to do together. So I haven't gone with him in years and years just because of our schedules, and he doesn't travel a ton, especially when he was still working. So I'm grateful to get to spend some quality time with my folks. I hope you get to spend quality time this week with the people who are important in your life. And I'm going to do a post about this, but if your holiday season looks different than you expected it to, just like my holiday season looks different than I expected it to, my heart goes out to you. You're going to get through this. You're a tough little cookie. You're going to be okay. All right. Try and make the most of it. Try and find the silver lining. Try and enjoy the parts that you can, even if they're small and even if they're not the parts that you wanted to be enjoying this season. Okay. All right. So I'm going to announce towards the end the winners of the rating and review giveaway. 
But let's dive in to today's content, okay? Today's topic came out of a client session last week. And I loved the conversation that I had with my client so much, I knew that I had to share it on the podcast. So my client comes to our session and I ask her, hey, tell me what's been going on. Give me an update. How have things been going? And she starts off with saying to me, hey, Olivia, you know, I'm like really struggling with focusing. I'm just having a hard time focusing. And I said, okay, tell me more about that. And we started to get into it. And I'm going to do a separate podcast. I think it's going to be the episode right after this one to talk about how I solve problems. And I know I've done some content around solving problems, but this is a specific way that I've learned to get myself unstuck by creating a process out of thin air. And I'm going to walk you through and teach you how to do that for yourself. That's a separate episode, though. I want to talk about what I did with this client in particular when we were addressing the issue of focusing. So she comes to the session and she tells me she's struggling with staying focused, with being focused, with focusing. And I asked her, I said, walk me through the process. If you had to create a process for focusing, a step-by-step process that you could follow, walk me through it. What would it look like? And she really struggled to articulate and form an answer for what I was asking her to articulate. She was like, frankly, like respectfully, if I knew how to focus, I wouldn't be having this problem. I wouldn't be asking you this question. I wouldn't be bringing this up right now. And while I totally understand where she's coming from, I do want to teach you to tap into your own ability to create a process, sort of out of thin air, just to be able to talk yourself through it, to start to identify steps. So the more we talked I realized she was struggling to really understand what I was asking her to do. So I knew at that moment that I was going to walk her through it. I was going to explain by way of example what I was talking about. But before I got to that, through the course of our conversation, I realized, and I've never articulated this quite this way before, and I was so excited to share it with you. I realized there's two different types of focus. There's perfect ideal focus. And then there's imperfect focus. And so many people are chasing and craving perfect ideal focus. Now, what the heck am I talking about? Perfect ideal focus is the focus that you experience when you work on something you want to be working on. That's where you devote all of your attention to something. You don't pick your head up. You don't come up for air. You don't distract yourself. You don't allow interruptions. You just stay focused, like laser focused. And then the second time that this comes up, so the first time is when you really want to be working on something, when you're really into it, all right? Like for me, if you ever watch me do a jigsaw puzzle, I am into it. That is an understatement. I promise you. I am intense. I did a puzzle with my aunt and my cousin Kenna a couple weeks ago. I guess that was at, well, maybe it was the end of September, I guess. It was right before I moved to Charleston. So a couple months ago, I suppose. But we worked on a jigsaw puzzle at my parents' house and they are just like me. They are just as intense. They are so focused talk about perfect ideal focus. Neither of us or none of us did anything other than work on this puzzle start to finish. We got it done in an entire sitting. There were no distractions, no funny business. We just got to work, okay? Myopically laser focused. That's ideal focus. So when we want to be working on something, when we're really into it, we're perfectly focused then. The other time I see people perfectly focused is when they're working on something at the very last minute. And if they don't remain focused, they won't finish it in time. You're up against a really hard deadline. You put your phone down. You don't do any of the things that would normally distract you or allow you to buffer and procrastinate. You just get to work, okay? So those are two examples of perfect ideal focus. And what I was asking my client to do was to walk me through Let's say I couldn't see, okay? And you needed to describe to me what it looks like 
what you would need to do step by step by step, microscopic step by step by step, what you need to do in order to perfectly focus. If you were to describe it to me, what would it look like? So it would look like putting your phone down, starting working on whatever it is, not stopping, not grabbing your phone at any point, and working to completion, right? That's what it would look like to perfectly focus, the process of perfectly focusing, all right? Now, that's not what most of us do. So when we're not up against a tight deadline, rushing at the last minute, or we're not working on something that we really, really, really want to be working on, that we're really into, we end up doing the second type of focusing, which is imperfectly focusing. I'm going to call this imperfect focus. And imperfect focus looks like getting distracted, allowing yourself to be distracted, distracting yourself, allowing interruptions, losing your attention, turning to something else while you're in the middle of doing the task at hand. That's what imperfect focus looks like. And my perfectionists, if you're listening to this, you know you're making imperfect focus a problem. Just like my client was when she says, Olivia, I'm struggling to focus. I'm having a hard time focusing. And what happens is when you focus imperfectly and you get distracted, you distract yourself, you allow yourself to be interrupted, then you get frustrated with the fact that you're not focusing perfectly So then you invest more time into the distracted activity, okay? You focus more imperfectly. You stop focusing because you're frustrated with yourself, you're discouraged, you're upset with yourself for not perfectly focusing instead of giving yourself some grace. Now, what I don't mean by giving yourself some grace is just saying, yeah, it is what it is. I'm having a hard time focusing and I'm not going to pay attention and I'm not going to get back to what I was doing. That's not what I'm talking about here. What I mean by giving yourself some grace is what if the process for imperfect focus looked like this? All right. I'm going to use recording this podcast, for example. All right. Now, this isn't every time I record the podcast, but a lot of times I record the podcast if I was to break down and describe to you step by step by step by step by step the things that I do in an imperfectly focused manner, which is typically how I record this thing. It looks like I sit down in front of my computer. I put my phone away. I open up GarageBand, which is the app on my Mac that I use to record my podcast episodes. I plug in my podcast microphone. I use a specific microphone to record it. It gives the best sound. I click the file and the settings tab to make sure that the microphone is hooked up. That way I don't record the episode without using the correct mic and have poor audio quality and need to record it all again. So once I've sat down, put my phone away, opened GarageBand, and I check to make sure the mic is plugged in and it's on the right setting, then I record the intro. That's the part where I say, you're listening to the Less Stress Lawyer podcast, episode 84. Today we're talking about blah, blah, blah. And then I give you the title, right? And I say, you ready? Let's go. And then I pause and then I outline the episode. I go through and I figure out roughly what I want to say. Now, I don't script out the entire thing but I do map out the things that I want to talk about, the points that I want to make. And then I start recording. So if I were to list that out, let me count them. Sit down, step one. Step two, put phone away. Step three, open up GarageBand. Step four, plug in mic. Step five, check mic. Step six, record intro. Step seven, outline the podcast. And then step eight is to start recording the core content. Okay. Normally for me, like step eight is give you a little bit of an update on my life, what's been going on. We just do a little bit of like the pleasantries in the beginning, just to bring you all along with me in my life and feel like you're a part of my life, just like I am privileged to be a part of your life. So that's step eight. And then step nine is to get into the meat and potatoes of the episode. So I start recording that part. And lo and behold, as I'm doing this, I always reach a point where I subconsciously think to myself, shoot, I don't know what to say next. 
And as soon as I think the thought, I don't know what to say next, or I'm not sure what to say next, or I don't know where to go from here, it's just a tiny micro little thought, and then I feel confused. That's the emotion that that thought creates for me. And when I think the thought, I don't know what to say next, and I feel confused, step 10 is I stop recording. I press pause or I press the stop button. Step 11 is I grab my phone. Step 12 is I go on Instagram. Step 13 is I start to scroll. Step 14 is I catch myself. Step 15 is I stop and I remind myself we're not done with the episode yet. Step 16 is I put my phone back down. And step 17 is I start recording again. Okay. I figure out what I'm going to say next and I start recording again. Now, this process, this part of the process specifically from where I think to myself, I don't know what to say next. So that's step 10. And then I feel confused and I stop recording and I grab my phone and I go on Instagram or I text someone or I check my email or I go on LinkedIn, whatever the activity is that I use to distract myself. And then I catch myself and then I stop doing it. And then I put my phone down and then I go back to recording and I figure out what to say next. And I keep recording until this happens again. And what I end up doing as I record the podcast is I cycle through and repeat steps nine through 16 over and over and over again until I get to the point where I get close enough towards the end of the episode that I see the end in sight. And then I pivot and transition back to that perfect focus rather than the imperfect focus. And I just power through and I record the rest of the episode because the end is so near that I'm really motivated to just get it done so I can get the dopamine hit of finishing the project that I'm working on, recording the episode. Now, what I've noticed is different about me than the way my clients think about this is that I don't beat myself up for being imperfectly focused. I don't give myself a hard time. I don't make it a problem. I recognize when I'm recording something or doing an activity that I don't have the utmost enthusiasm for. And as much as I love teaching you guys things, this is an activity that I'm not always in the mood to do. That's me being completely transparent. Just like I'm not always in the mood to respond to an email or I'm not always in the mood to record video content for social media or I'm not always in the mood to create a post. We don't need to be in the mood in order to do something. You just need to know if you're not in the mode to do it, you're going to have resistance to finishing it. And it's likely that you're going to be imperfectly focused and more likely to distract yourself while you're working on something than you are if you're really jazzed about something. Like I am very jazzed about recording this episode. I was super inspired when I brought this up with my client last week and I couldn't wait to talk to you about it. So I'm able to just power through. But other times I pick topics that I believe are really useful for you, but I am not always super, super excited about that topic at that time. I probably planned it in advance. I knew I wanted to record it to get it to you, but I'm not feeling super motivated. And we don't want to rely on motivation to get work done. When we're motivated, we're perfectly focused. But when we're not motivated, we're going to be imperfectly focused. And you just get to decide that being imperfectly focused isn't a problem. If you make it a problem, you're going to devote more time to the distraction. Unlike what I do, which is my goal is to reduce the amount of distracted time as much as possible without expecting there to be no distracted time at all. All right. So your goal when you're working on being imperfectly focused, you're going to leave room for yourself to get distracted, to distract yourself from the task at hand. And then the whole goal, the whole thing you want to be striving for is just to make those distracted moments take the least amount of time as possible. You want to catch yourself as quick as you can, realizing that you distracted yourself. And then you want to stop engaging in the distracted activity. And you want to turn back to the task at hand, the thing that you're in the middle of doing as quickly as possible. So you're making these distraction cycles, steps nine through 16 or 10 through 16, you're making them as short as possible. That's the goal when you're working on being imperfectly focused. 
You're not beating yourself up. You're just paying attention to yourself. You're being curious. You're watching this happen and you are working to reduce the distracted time as much as possible. All right. That's what it looks like to be imperfectly focused. That's the process of quote unquote focusing. If you think of focusing as a verb, something that you actively strive for, you actively work towards with your actions. These are all of the little microscopic steps that you would need to take in order to quote unquote focus, to be focused, to create the result of working on something in a focused manner. There's perfect focus and there's imperfect focus. Most of the time, you're going to be imperfectly focusing. Now, the more you get better at imperfectly focusing, the more often you will also perfectly focus, but you're not going to have a perfect track record. This isn't going to be 100% of the time I'm perfectly, ideally focused on the task in front of me. You've got to leave room for yourself to be a human, to not make it a problem, and to know how to course correct as quickly as possible. That's the goal here, course correcting as quickly as possible. So I want you to take this concept with you, okay? I want you to go into your week, and if you're struggling to focus on something, I want you to aim for imperfect focus, not perfect focus. And I've given you the process for imperfectly focusing. Now, I gave you an example from my own life, the podcast, recording episodes like this, but you could use this with email, right? Let's say email's coming in and you want to clear your inbox. What needs to happen? Go through and create a process for yourself. What does imperfect focus look like for that? Or if you need to respond to an email, you're going to open up the email you received. You're going to read it. Actually, let me back up. We'll get even more specific. You're going to open your computer. You're going to open your email. Your phone's going to have to be put away. It's going to need to be next to you, not in front of you, unless you're using your phone to respond to email right? But you have to close out of the other apps, open up the email application, read the email, decide right then and there to respond to it. Draft your answer or start drafting your answer. Type out your intro. Hello, how are you? I hope this email finds you well. I'm not actually recommending that you say that. That's a little cheesy, but you get my point. Open the email and then start typing what you need to say in the email. Now you might catch yourself thinking, I don't know what to say next, and you feel confused, and you stop typing the email, and you jump to something else, something that distracts you from having to sit through and figure out what to say next, having to work through that confusion that you experience. And if you're imperfectly focusing, you're not going to make this a problem. You're just going to notice that you turned your attention to something else. You're going to realize why you turned your attention to something else. It's because you were feeling confused about what to say next. And you're going to stop doing the distracted activity. And then you're going to turn back to the email and you're going to sit in the confusion. You're going to work through it. You're going to figure out the next sentence you need to say, and then you're going to type it. And then you're going to type another sentence after that and another sentence after that. And if you distract yourself again, because you reach another point in the email where you think, I don't know what to say next, and you feel confused, you're going to repeat that process, that loop part of this imperfect focus process. You're going to stop doing the distracted activity once you catch yourself and you realize why you're doing it. You're going to turn back to the email. You're going to figure out what to say next, and you're going to keep doing that, working in that loop, completing that cycle as many times as necessary, shortening the time period of distraction as much as you can until you're done with the email. Same thing with writing a brief or drafting a contract. Same thing with reviewing documents. You distract yourself because you get a little bored or you get confused about what to do next or you're not sure whether a document's relevant or not or you don't know what to say. Notice your pattern. You feel a negative feeling because you're thinking a thought and then you distract yourself. The art of being imperfectly focused is being able to recognize why you distract yourself, what you're distracting yourself from, and to catch yourself and to course correct and go back to the task at hand, sit in the discomfort, work through it, and get a little bit further to make a little bit more progress. All right? Take this with you. Go out there. Work on being imperfectly focused. Don't fixate on having to have 100% of your attention 
100% of the time doing the thing that you decided to do. That's ideal. Absolutely. But if that's not what happens, if you get distracted and you distract yourself from what it is that you're doing because you're confused, because you're bored for whatever other reason, figure out the reason and then practice being imperfectly focused. Okay. I hope this helps you. I hope you have a beautiful Thanksgiving. I'm going to talk to you in the next episode, but before I leave you, let's pick the five winners. Okay. Actually, I lied. Before I get to the five winners, quick announcement. If you're following me on social media, you already know this, but I am in the middle of a launch for my upcoming retreat. Okay. The retreat is called the Obsessed Retreat. It starts with a three and a half day in person event. We're going to be in Miami Beach, Florida, March 20th through 23rd. The whole point of the retreat is it's designed to help you create a life you're obsessed with. I am really a huge advocate for living a life that you absolutely love, not just a life that you merely tolerate. I really want people to live a life they're obsessed with. And the way that you do that, there's a three-part framework that I'm going to teach you. We're going to solve problems. That's day one of the workshop. Day two, I'm going to teach you how to develop the skills you need in order to create a life you're obsessed with. We're going to talk about making decisions ahead of time, developing discipline, practicing constraint. Those are essential to creating a life that you're obsessed with, a life that you love. And then on day three, we're going to set goals and make plans. You're going to map out everything that you need to do and wants to do in 2024 in order to create the results you want and get where you want to go. Okay. So three days we meet, we do the welcome reception. You know, I always do that when I host events, an amazing welcome reception. It's going to be so fun. You get to meet me and all the other retreaters. And then we wake up the next morning, breakfast is served, group breakfast, so delicious. And then we dive in to, we do six hour days, three days in a row. So that's 18 hours of workshopping, coaching, growing, learning, transforming. Okay. Three days. Day one is all about solving the problems you're facing. We're going to talk about the professional aspects of your life and also the personal aspects of your life. Because in order to create a life you're obsessed with, we can't just have one area be good. It's all got to be good. So we're going to solve problems day one. Day two, we're going to develop those essential skills. And then day three, we're going to set goals and make plans. And then, of course, just like I always do, it ends with a really decadent, lavish farewell dinner where we get to celebrate everything that we accomplished in person. Okay. Now, people keep asking me, Olivia, in addition to the in-person event, is there any other support that we get when we sign up for the Obsessed Retreat? The answer is yes. All right. So when you sign up to attend the Obsessed Retreat, you get lifetime access to two different things. Number one, you get lifetime access. You heard me right. Lifetime access to monthly group coaching calls. They're live calls. And each month we're going to coach, go through different exercises, different prompts I give you in order to make sure you accomplish what you set out to achieve. Okay. It's going to be amazing support to make sure you stay on track and achieve what you set out to when we're in person together in Miami in March. You're also going to get lifetime access to the Obsessed Retreat member portal. The member portal is going to be where you can come and submit questions or issues to get coached on. And I'll coach you in writing. Written coaching is so, so powerful. Number one, you can sit with it. Sometimes when you get coached, live in person, face to face or, you know, over Zoom, you have a hard time taking everything in all at once. Now, obviously, face to face live in real time coaching is super super powerful, super effective. But so is written coaching, just for different reasons. You get to sit with it, you notice different things, you can slow yourself down, you can go back to it over and over again and recognize different aspects of the coaching that feel more relevant at one time over another. Written coaching is super powerful. So inside the member portal, which you also get lifetime access to, you're going to be able to submit questions to me. It can just be simple questions that you just want answers to. You want advice, tips, tricks, feedback on something, but you can also submit issues to get coached on. And I'll coach you in writing and respond in writing to your questions. You also get to watch the retreat recording replays. They're going to be available in the member portal. 
And I'll also be adding additional materials over the months, over the years for you to watch on demand. I love over delivering to my people. So I'm constantly going to be updating the member portal with new stuff in there. It's going to be so fun. Kind of like Easter eggs or like Christmas day. Okay. And then you also are going to have a community platform. So you're going to be able to stay connected to everyone that you meet in person. All of the rest of the retreaters, you'll be able to stay connected to inside the member portal. So that's what you get when you join the three and a half day event in Miami in March, March 20th through 23rd. And then you get lifetime access to the monthly group coaching calls and the obsessed retreat member portal. It is an insane value, you guys. When I decided to add on the monthly coaching calls, the lifetime access to that, I like blew my own mind. I just can't get over it. And the response has been epic. People keep reaching out to me. They're like, I can't believe that. I was so excited to come and be with you in Miami. And now this, I can't believe you're offering this to us. People are so excited because they know it's everything they need to really accomplish what they want to accomplish. So if you're interested in working with me, also... I'm getting ready to launch a members-only subscription for lawyers only. And because I know or knew that I was getting ready to launch that, I wanted to give people an opportunity to work with me whether or not they practice law. Because a lot of people who follow me, they're former lawyers. They're people who used to practice, but they've transitioned to something else. And rather than commingling lawyers and former lawyers inside the subscription that I'm starting at the end of December, and we'll start officially in January. Our first call is January 10th. I wanted to create a space, a program, an offering for everyone, for anyone who listens to me or who follows me who's been interested in working with me, okay? If that's you, if you're listening right now, this is your opportunity to work with me, all right? So you wanna make sure that you register. You can go to bit.ly forward slash the dash obsessed dash retreat. Okay. Or you can go to my social media platforms, LinkedIn or Instagram and access it there. There's a link in my bio in both places for you to access and register for the obsessed retreat. You can also go to my link tree, which is link tr dot ee forward slash the less stressed lawyer. That's another way to access the registration page for the obsessed retreat, the retreat and the lifetime access to the monthly group coaching calls and the member portal costs $4,000. Okay. And you can pay that all at once or in installment payments. So if you're interested in working with me, make sure you sign up. You got to sign up before December 1st. And if you want to stay at the venue that the retreat is being hosted at, we're staying at the Betsy Hotel in Miami Beach, Florida. It's on South Beach. It's absolutely incredible. If you have followed me on social media, you know I don't pull any punches. I don't skimp when it comes to the locations that I select. I want it to not only be a transformative experience for you, but I want it to feel like a vacation. I want it to feel luxurious and decadent. So the Betsy Hotel is absolutely that, just to the nines, over the top, stunning. If you want to stay at the Betsy Hotel, we have a very, 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 I'm going to say it one more time, a very limited room block. So you want to register for the retreat as soon as you possibly can in order to make sure you get in that room block at our discounted rate, and it's $5.79 a night which is a steal for Miami at the time of year that we're going to be there, okay? Especially for a location as nice as the Betsy. So make sure you go, go to my social media, go to bit.ly forward slash the dash obsessed dash retreat and sign up and join me in Miami in March to create a life you're obsessed with. I can't wait to see you in South Beach. All right, without further ado, here are the five winners of the reading and review contest or giveaway, I suppose. And I'm just reading the handle that you submitted the rating and review with. And then you are going to have to reach out to me. You can contact me on social media, Instagram or LinkedIn, just DM me, or you can email me at 
Olivia at the less stressed lawyer.com. All right. And just send me your contact information, send me your email so I can send you the gift that I'm going to send you. All right. So here are the five winners Kristen King, I think it's Javen. If I'm mispronouncing that, I'm so sorry. The second person, the handle is the peacemaker. So I don't know who that is. You're going to have to reach out to me and let me know. The third person is RJP Injury Attorney. That's the handle. The fourth person is J.R. Levinson. And the fifth person, also another handle that I can't recognize who it is, Keeping It Rail, R-A-Y-L. Okay, Keeping It Rail. Like keeping it real, but not quite. Okay, those are the five. If you contact me, you will receive your prize. And for anyone listening, I'm going to do this again. Actually, we can just start it right now. I will do another giveaway by the end of the year. So you have between now and the end of the year to submit a rating and review. The rating and review winners, the giveaway winners, receive a $50 gift certificate to Amazon. Okay, $50 gift card to Amazon, and you get to buy yourself whatever it is you want. If you're anything like me, you love buying things for yourself. I love getting myself presents, especially during the holiday season. So this is just a little bonus. You get to go buy yourself something. So reach out to me if you're one of the five winners, and I will send you your Amazon gift card. Okay. Thank you again so much for taking time out of your busy day to help me share this podcast with more people means the world to me. I am very thankful for you. And I'm thankful for everyone else who took the time to leave a rating and review. You can resubmit too. That's how I understand iTunes to work. So you can submit another rating and review if you want another opportunity to join and to win the next one. So the next one will go until December 31st, and then I'll pick five more winners. All right. That's what I've got for you this week, my friends. I hope you have a beautiful week and a wonderful Thanksgiving, and I will talk to you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Less Stressed Lawyer podcast. If you want more info about Olivia Vizacaro or the show's notes and resources from today's episode, visit thelessstressedlawyer.com.